Good afternoon and welcome to this virtual professional development opportunity. My name is Joe Schmidt. I'm a social studies specialist for the Maine Department of Education. Uh, today we are lucky to have Keith Mahoney of Mesolansky Middle School. He's going to be talking about his experiences using C-SPAN resources and teaching in the classroom, uh, especially in light of the changing classroom environment that we are currently working in. We're also lucky to have Tom Grain from C-SPAN and uh, Pamela from C-SPAN Education as well joining us. Um, so we're going to turn things over to Keith, and Keith is going to get us going um, for today. And Keith, I'm making you the host. All right. So um, like, like Joe said, my name is Keith Mahoney. I teach over at Meslonsky Middle School. Um, this past July, I was chosen to go down to the C-SPAN Educator Conference for middle school students. Um, and since then, I've been implementing uh, C-SPAN Classroom in my in my classroom every Monday as a current event style format for my sixth graders. Um, I just wanted to go over real quick. Right now, C-SPAN classroom is open for everybody. Uh, usually there's a password protected um, profile, um, but with all this COVID-19 stuff, they've opened it up to everybody. Um, Tom and Pam are great along with Craig. Um, they get back to you within hours of emailing uh, for any resources that you might need or wanna see or anything else. Um, so I just wanted to go over today what they have for different resources. Uh, the first one that I wanted to start with was bell ringers. So on their website, um, you can go right into the bell ringers. Everything is done um, through Google Docs. And they have a library dating back, I believe, to 1987 of everything that C-SPAN's ever uh, shown on their broadcast. So under the table of contents, you can pick anything you want. You can search. Um, I usually st search Maine, see what they have for Maine. Um, and so these bell ringers here have some sort of thing about Maine. Uh, to pick one out, there's one about the Edwards Dam. The bell ringers are just to start off the class, um, or you can use it in any other format. They're just short clips, five to seven minutes. Um, and they have assignments right down below here with additional resources if you want to go to go deeper. Um, in my classroom, I've used bell ringers just to kind of provoke interest as a hook to get kids thinking about different things and then go into a, a lesson even more. Um, they're really well done. And like I said, they, there's just a multitude of, of topics. Did, was there a question? Did I see something pop up? Oh, no, I just put the website uh, URL in there um, oh. so they can follow along if they want. Perfect. Um, the one that I use the most is lesson plans. And these are awesome. Uh, they're in different categories. The one that I started off with with my kids was just an introduction to the C-SPAN video. And basically, it's a brief overview of how to use the video library. And then as an extension, activity um, you could see the top viewed videos over the last 30 years and have the students go and dive in from there um, and like everything's on google docs so it's really easy for me because i just share it to my google classroom and it's very easy to copy so on a typical monday what i would do is i'd go in and i'd find my lesson plan um, I would, I would make a copy of it, throw it up on a Google classroom, and then we'd go through it as a class watching the videos together in this, uh, time of distance learning. I would suggest that, um, if you want to pop it up onto any of your, however you connect with kids and walk them through it, then that would be a, a great way to use this resource during this time. Um, how do I get back to C-SPAN classroom? Mm -hmm. Feel free to pop in too, because I, if I go too fast, that's one of my kind of uh, one of my faults as I run through things. Um, each lesson plan comes with procedures, it comes with extensions, and it will also tell you grade levels um, that you can that you want to do. You can go through the whole uh, lesson plans here. Also, if you go back to the home page and you go to the featured resources, you can see it by curriculum and theme. 
Um, so you can go through and just pick whatever you want to talk about at that point in time. Um, I usually what I do is I kind of pull my classes on Thursday, Friday to see what they want to learn about. And then I take the weekend to figure out where to go from there. Um, I don't know how much contact you guys are having with your kids right now during this um, remote learning, but we've been doing Zoom meetings for my class every Thursday. And so we've been talking about different things that they could be working on and accessing during that time. Um, yeah, Keith, can I, it's, can I just jump in for a second? Yeah, can go you, for it. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Pam and I work with C-SPAN and we've been doing these two, these, um, Zoom meetings um, with teachers whenever we connect with them. And just thinking um, to your point even about, about the lesson plans um, and the way C-SPAN operates. I mean, we're completely nonpartisan and I say that because that is a part of every team. But when we do create our, our lesson plans and you'll see those a variety of clips as, as Keith was just highlighting a lesson, um, we provide a, uh, a number of different perspectives on whatever that, that issue might be. And um, so some teachers jigsaw it. So now if you are at home and you are sharing this lesson with your students, if you want them to look at different video links or however you're gonna assign them or they can pick and choose an area of interest and, then re and respond to it, just I just wanted to, to share that information so that people know um, we are bringing different perspectives to whatever the, the topic or the issue is. Um, I don't know, Tom, if you wanna add anything, but it was just something that I thought I would throw out there. Uh, no, I'm good for now. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to put that in there. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that's kind of what drew me to, to the C-SPAN thing too, is because I view it more as almost a primary source than anything else. Yeah. Because it's mm -hmm. really, it really is unfiltered. Um, and so mm -hmm. there's that aspect of it. Am mm -hmm. I sharing my screen again? Yes. There you go. You're good. Perfect. All right. So, I mean, the one thing I will say starting off is that it, there's a lot of resources here. So it, it can be overwhelming, but if you go into it with a specific goal, I think that helps you out a little bit too. If you wanna talk about the branches of government, they have that there. But if you start perusing through it, you can go down a rabbit hole pretty quick. And it's really fun rabbit hole if you're a history buff like us, but um, <laughs> it could be also confusing for kids too. Um, so it, I don't know what the directives are from all the different districts in Maine, I know ours is to provide resources that can just help kids out um, and not to really engage them in new learning. Um, but this is some, something that my kids have already been doing. So that's why I just continue on with it. Um, and it's up to date all the time. Uh, this is a new one that just came out today. So they're constantly updating things. One of the other really cool things that um, I think is just amazing is the constitutional clips um, because as you'll see in a second they've put the constitution on their on their platform and then every one of these blue links is a, a video to show that part of the constitution so we the people there's a link that talks about the we, we the people clause so one of the activities i was thinking that you could do with kids is just have them kind of go through uh, the constitutional clips, you know, section by section and learn a little bit more about the Constitution, write down their ideas about what they think um, their perspective is on that article or the preamble or, or whatever you want to do and have them kind of start to dive into the living document that pretty much runs everything. Yeah, um, Keith, when you just highlighted the We the People one, we like to talk about that one as well because of the different perspectives that you just pointed out. So whether it's Jeffrey Rosen at the National Constitution Center giving a tour talking about that document or President Reagan talking about what uh, the document means in our country, the document tells the government what it can do, whereas other countries, their constitutions tell the people what it can do. So you can contrast that with uh, Condoleezza Rice talking about what it meant uh, for her uh, when this document was created. And then we go on through them and even we have Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, in one of the clips talking about what it meant for women when this document was founded. So just to your point that students can see the constitution in action and how relevant it is today. And then you also have the additional resources down here. So if you don't, if you wanna give them some more guidance, you can go to the bell ringer about We The People and have guiding questions for you. You can do the whole lesson plan. 
Um, I've done the constitutional convention lesson plan before, and that was a lot of fun. Um, it got the kids thinking about the different, the, the different sides of the debate and big states or small states and representation. Um, it really engaged them. Uh, one um, of the, oh, yeah, Tom? sorry, go ahead. No, oh, yeah, yeah. One, uh, one thing that um, kind of complements this resource is we have a couple lessons that have um, a more formalized way for students to um, look at this resource as a whole. So we have a uh, constitutional scavenger hunt lesson. We also have a Bill of Rights lesson that has them use this um, to search for answers to uh, uh, questions on a handout. Um, and we also have a due process one too. Um, and then there's an enumerated power. So there's a couple different companion lessons that you can um, implement with this, this resource. One of the ones, uh, one of the resources that they have on here that I'm kind of bummed I haven't been able to do more with, I did one deliberation with my kids um, and the plan was to do more. And then uh, we got told not to come to work. <laughs> but uh, this classroom deliberations website is really cool because it takes a topic, any one of these recent issues here. Um, we did the government provide free college for students. And it has clips from both sides, from both positions. It has background videos to help them kind of initiate their knowledge about the topic. Um, good questions in here, note-taking charts. And then my kids loved it because they get to debate. Um, and so one of the activities that I've been kind of kicking around in my head, especially if we um, end up going beyond our April 27th deadline, is to set up a way for my kids to actually kind of create their own deliberation slash DBQ thing where they have to come up with um, a topic and then they have to actually kind of create both positions to see which one that they really want to do uh, and then take a side after that. But they have to kind of search through the library, which I'll show you in a second, and come up with clips that support both sides of a question. Um, it's kind of a, I think it's a big task, but if we're stuck out of school until next year. I think it's something that we can work through on a week to week basis. So the deliberations are really cool, especially in the classroom. I don't know how much they would help you out um, over remote teaching, but it's something that's there for you as a resource, especially if you get back in your classroom. And like I said before, everything's on Google Docs, which is really nice because most schools in Maine are Google uh, schools. So it's really easy just to copy. Um, you can manipulate it a little bit and, and take out things that you don't need or add things on that you think might help your students out more because you know your kids. Um, and so the deliberations thing is a really cool, really, really cool uh, resource here. Um, one thing that we found um, that teachers um, could do is with the deliberations, if they have it as a discussion board, so if you have Blackboard or one of the other learning management systems that have a discussion board um, function, that you can pose that, that question as a discussion board question and then have the students research and then bring back that research to engage in this discussion on whatever system that you're using. I'm stealing that idea, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> and thoughtful responses to Tom's point when you say about research. It's not just I agree, but substantiating it with some um, some uh, facts that they researched. Mm -hmm. um, another one of the resources that could help you just engage with your kids every day is the On This Day in History. Um, they They have different topics for every day, so I don't Today is Cesar Chavez Day. So there's video clips about Cesar Chavez because he was born on this day in Arizona. And that could help engage your kids on a daily basis to kind of give them, I like to give them a historical fact of the day. Um, but if there's a good on this day, we share it out at the beginning of class, um, easily embedded into whatever learning modality you have mm -hmm. going on in your district. Uh, yesterday, I I created the one on um, President Reagan. It was the day of his assassination. And I say that because the way these are designed is we aim to have a first clip as a background video clip just to set the topic up or um, archival footage, which was fun to find. Um, there he was making his remarks. And then 
some eyewitness testimony, if we have that for clips or legacy clips or lessons learned or the impact. So that's how these on this day videos are designed, uh, video collections are designed. Mm -hmm. We also have the Congressional Chronicle, if I can get back to it, which is down here. And this is pretty cool because you can look at all the different speakers from the House and the Senate or the joint, um, the joint House and Senate uh, sessions, but you can actually search through for your, you know, you can search through for Angus King and see what he's been up to lately um, in debate, which doesn't look like, my, oh, because I'm in the house. Mm -hmm. So if I were to search the Senate, maybe? No. If you scroll down, Keith, let's take a look here. Scroll down, let's see. So we're there you go. You can sort this way, whether for the House or the Senate, if you want me to jump in here. If you, yes, select members. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I can just go to the state. Yeah, you can go to the state. This looks at the House, though. That's the House. Yep, so the House. So you can search in the House or you can search. If you go up here and hit if, Senate. If you go into the Senate. There you go. And each person who's been in, on C-SPAN has their own page just like this. So here they could take a look at uh, current videos that he's been featured on um, in programs on C-SPAN. Um, if you scroll down here to the bottom, this is, you can keep scrolling down here. You can see the committees on which he served and each of that highlighted text will take you to videos that you can search and listen to his students can listen to him speak and share his position as well how he's voted on bills bills that he's sponsored or co-sponsored yeah you can do a deep dive into this and we've heard from teachers this is great one-stop uh, site for students to collectively research it i'll just point you under if you go to the top left underneath that little profile picture it has his official bio. You can click on that if you like. This is where there's a lesson that we've had to go with this. But students, uh, we often point them to this first, just to, to provide some basic information, their background, education, work experience, because it provides that foundation from a, which they can do additional research on the Congressional Chronicles. So see the relationship between his experience background and committees and votes and bills and all of that. The other fun thing, if you go back to that page, is uh, the Twitter feed. It's another way for students to see how they are engaging with their constituents back home when they're in Washington or actually what they're doing um, when they are back home. So they can see um, just an interesting way to stay uh, currently connected with them. So thank you for doing that. I like Congressional Chronicle. It's fun to dive into that. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have a handout somewhere to do like a deep dive into each one, right? Yeah, yep, yep. It's a, it's a lesson that you can search for on our website and with a handout and it'll just walk students through the process we just went through. Go to this page, go to the official bio, and then it'll walk you through the committees, the votes, the bills. Um, but yeah, there's a number of ways you can use that. Mm -hmm. There's a lesson on the website. And then if you find that you want to create your own resource, um, this is one of the coolest things. I actually taught my dad this because he's going nuts in retirement and not being able to go anywhere. <laughs> uh, he, you can actually search by keyword of anything that C-SPAN's had online or uh, on their um, programming since 1987, I believe. Mm -hmm. So there's over 258,000 hours of content. So um, you, we'll just stick with Angus King, I guess. And if you search Angus King here, you know, there'll be different um, results for anything you need. In, in January 4th of 2013, he had some comments on Barney Frank um, and he was on C-SPAN then. The other cool thing 
um, that I found is if you have, um, let's see a clip here. So this is John Tierney talking about the power of bad. Um, it's a 48 minute clip. If you had a certain thing you wanted to look at, um, terrible reporter, there you go. Um, anything that comes up with reporter will come up. You can click right here and it'll bring you right to the point where he starts talking about it. Um, it searches through the uh, closed captioning and then you can make clips right there if you'd like to for your students about anything that they have in the video library. And this is on cspan.org, not the classroom page. And that's kind of C-SPAN classroom in a nutshell. Um, you guys wanna, did I miss anything or can I expand on anything? Or? Um, the one thing um, that I think you touched upon, but um, if you're looking for full lesson plans, the so things that are pretty much right off the shelf and you can take and implement in your classes, um, all of our lesson plans are on the web, the main website, the cspan.org slash classroom. Um, and if you go to lesson plans, um, and these are all now, thanks to what we did last week with taking away the login, um, you can now access these without a login. Um, so students can have access to these. Um, any number of uh, teachers can. So you don't have to necessarily sign up for a C-SPAN classroom account to uh, look at these. So if you are looking for something on, let's say, um, the legislative branch. If you click under the legislative branch topic, um, you can see things that are specifically relating to the legislative branch. You can also search for whatever lesson that you're looking for. Um, so if you're looking for something about the 1918 Spanish flu, um, you can look for that. And it's going to give you anything that has that in its title. Um, and then you can see the lesson, um, lesson learned from, from the 1918 uh, influenza pandemic. And all the lessons are going to have multiple clips. Um, they're going to have some sort of description. They're going to have a warm up. Um, they're pretty um, general and that's intentional so uh, teachers can adapt them to meet their needs. Um, so two months ago, nobody thought that everyone was going to be online. Um, so these are something that can be applied to online. So they're going to have some sort of introduction. Um, they're going to have some sort of um, exploration. Um, and then the handouts here are, are similar to what uh, Heath or uh, Keith had mentioned earlier, where there's um, a either graphic organizer or there are some sort of um, questions. And then you can just give this URL right to the kids and then they'll be able to pick it up right from there. Um, but that's an example of what a lesson would look like. Um, but you can either search for them um, or they are found on the featured resources site too. Now, um, I'm looking at the chat and Renee has a question about the My C-SPAN Classroom. So Keith, if you don't mind, um, we can explain a little bit, but yes, yeah, selecting that. Yep, that's fine. We can, yeah, oh, thanks, okay. And we can explain this to you. So like we mentioned, all of our resources are free. Membership is free, registration is free. No, no hidden costs for anything. Um, when you go to the website, if you aren't a member, but before last week when we released it, you can access most things, but the bell ringers and lesson plans are behind your login. Um, that's been removed, as we said. The difference is, if you do create your own accounts, your own login, this is the benefit here. And Craig, Tom, and I, who make up C-SPAN's education team, we're all classroom teachers. So we remember being able to access resources that we may have saved on our desktop in our classroom and the challenges of that. So here you can access it as you're seeing from home. But where Keith just scrolled here to the teacher generated content on the left, let's just say, yeah, you can select, you can select about, uh, lesson plans if you want. Yeah, okay. so these are all the lesson plans that I've done so far and mm -hmm. some of the ones that I wanted to do with the kids. So uh, can you explain how you found them or what, what your thinking was, behind, your rationale behind doing this and how you saved them? Uh, yeah, so I would, it was really t kind of topic based for um, my students. Uh, they decided after like the first month of doing these that they wanted to kind of tell me what to do. So like I said, I, I'd spend the weekend kind of going through and finding one out. Um, so just overview of the census for a sec. For Yeah, perfect. You should show the tab. Exactly. So when you go to the, the lesson plan, 
um, I had just Googled, uh, not Googled, searched census on um, classroom, uh, C-SPAN classroom. And then there's a tab right here that says save to my classroom. And so it just goes right into this folder and I can save it. And then I can always access it right here. Yes, yeah, so whether it's a video clip, uh, which are updated uh, several times a week or less plan bell ring constitution clip on the state, whatever the resource may be. If you select it and it's something you wanna share with your students. Now, if you create a, a classroom login, you can give your students that uh, email and password and your students can get in. And yep. you can tell them to go into that folder and, and access that if you like. Um, but they're there for, for you guys to access. That's one benefit for your library. And one other thing, if you go right, whoop, can you scroll back up a second? Oh. At the bottom where it says under your teacher generated content. So if you go, keep going down, sorry, you know what my group chat is. There, you're good, there is that. Um, where it says add new folder. If you select that, you can rename, you can create your own folders and organize this content however you want. If it's World War One, World War Two, or whatever the topic is, if you type in whatever that folder is, and then you, you, can, you can type in a name there. And then if you select that uh, Space Force, cool. Yes, yeah, select that add button. There you have that. And then what you can do is if you find the resources that you'd like to add in there, you can just drag and drop. So, um, yep, yeah, where it says, oh, perfect. <laughs> it says, yep, yeah, you can drag and drop it in there. And um, when you go to that folder, it'll be there. It'll be, it'll be there. Yeah, just an easy way to organize your own resources. So, Renee, I hope that answers your question. One thing I do want to do is I'll type our email address in here in case anybody wants to follow up with us about anything. Educate us. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can do some questions. And then if you guys want me to share it back, we can. Let's just take a look at the chat here. I'm going to write, please email us any questions. Does anybody have any questions for Keith, like his experience in the classroom and maybe even kind of specifically, I think he's gone through some of this, but thinking about, um, you know, the world that you're teaching in right now, do you have any specific questions for Keith about how he's doing that or for Tom or Pamela about like how they've worked with teachers to implement this type of stuff or, I mean, really the purpose of this is C-SPAN has these wonderful resources. And that is great. Um, I also am very aware that giving you 20 brand new resources to play with right now is not super helpful if you can't really think about how to address that type of work. So I think here's your, your real opportunity to think about I'm teaching X in this format and help. These are the experts in the room. Yeah, so what I, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm typing it out. Uh, no, so following up on uh, my previous question, so I'm curious, Keith, do you, so do the kids have their own accounts or are you sharing your account with them? Or if I just give them the link, will it allow them to freely visit the site? So that right now you can freely visit the site. Um, what I did was I set up a generic account for my kids. Um, we, we break into teams, so I'm team Kennebec. So the username is Kennebec and the password is Mesolonsky. And so the kids have that saved on their laptops and then they can just access that at any point in time. Cool, thank you. Um, Renee, also if you, you can do it the way you were talking about too, where you just put the link into your Google Classroom mm -hmm. or that's another way to do it. And then without the, log, without the required login, they can access it from anywhere. So okay. there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, if they want to just, if you just want to put the links in, that's fine. If you want to do what uh, Keith was saying, that's another way to do it. So there's a couple different uh, ways to make it functional for you. So all of the docs are, are shareable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make myself yep. a copy. Just yeah. Make yourself a copy and then you can share it out. So gotcha. on a typical in school session, um, I'm just going to take the screen back for a second. I have my Google Classroom here and the classwork. And so we have C-SPAN Mondays. So at any point in time, um, uh, 
you know, they have this assignment. I just copied the, the, uh, the Google Classroom um, link from C-SPAN Classroom and then throw it up here. Tell them to follow along with the videos and complete the quick right at the end and then gave them the login right there. And that so then awesome. my, my in-class my in instruc, uh, instruction, not construction, my in-class <laughs> instruction was going over the videos with them and going through the handouts. And that can be done various ways when we're back in the classroom. I either, if it's a big, heavy topic, I usually group them up. If it's an easy topic, I kind of let them run individually. So. Another thing I'll mention about if you do have a membership with us is that we send out emails weekly. Usually we aim to get them out Sunday mornings so you guys can get ready for the week. Um, featuring new resources, topical resources. Um, Keith is someone we stay in constant contact with. So we have a, a group of teachers whom we ask for feedback on a regular basis. What, what is up and coming that you want us to aggregate resources for in our email so that you can, I mean, you can certainly take time and search, but uh, recognizing that time is, is a valuable resource for everybody. We try to get your feedback on topic areas, aggregate those and then push those out. So um, that's another uh, benefit. If you are a member, you'll get a weekly email with resources. Um, Amber had asked a question about the average length of clips. So they're generally about three to six minutes. Um, some are gonna be a little shorter, some are gonna be a little longer, um, but we try to get within that range. Um, so it, obviously if it's like the state of the union, we'll show the entire thing. But for the most part, if we're clipping something from a uh, press briefing or something, it's gonna be uh, within that time frame. Um, Tom, can I ask you another question about that? Is there um, any sort of maybe like transcript that goes along with the videos, the video clips? So most of the, depending on the feed, the, the video feed that we pick up, most of the, um, the video clips are going to have closed captioning. Um, there's a way to turn it on. Um, there is a complicated way to get the transcript, but it's, it's something that we can only pull, um, but all of them or most of them are gonna have that closed captioning feature. If you click on the video, there's a CC button. Okay, thank you. Fire away, folks. Yeah. Or if after this, you guys want to have individual conversations, we're happy. We're lonely. <laughs> Everybody's working from home, so this is a fun way for us to connect. But if you have more specific questions, please don't feel free to, to connect with us. We're happy to do that. Um, one thing I wanted to talk to Keith about is, um, so Keith has done a good job of showing um, how a lot of these complex topics that we've included in lessons have been really applied to middle school. Um, and Keith, would you be able to talk about some of the ways that you've done that? So some of these kind of big, big, like complicated processes like the electoral college and things like that that you've done. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of making it meaningful for them. Um, you know, a lot of like, the electoral college is a perfect example. A lot of my kids were kind of confused about, you know, the, all the memes that they were seeing or their parents were spouting off about on Facebook about, you know, abolish the electoral college versus keeping it. Um, so I said, well, let's figure out what it is first. And so for a bigger topic like that, um, it's a lot of direct teaching. It's a lot of conversational pieces. It's a lot of, you know, working with the kids. Um, some of the lighter topics um, that I've chosen is really uh, more like sub plan stuff, you know, stuff that they already know about. But with the electoral college, for example, um, we really delved into why that was necessary and then talked about the constitution a little bit. And it took a while to break down with the kids just because they're sixth graders. They're, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. So they're like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but it was just taking that time to actually get through it. And I'm blessed with the fact that um, my curriculum is really kind of watered down at this point to be able to, to add in that time um, for my, from my personal pat, they call it passion projects. Um, so that's kind of what I took the time to do. So when we did the electoral college, usually I do C-SPAN Mondays, but we, I think we took three days with it just to go through it because I took the time to, to really delve down a little bit on it. 
because I thought it was going to be a good foundational piece for them when they get to seventh grade and they start talking about the constitution to be able to have that background knowledge. Yeah, it's been fun to see the, uh, the process and the projects that you've been working at with, with your students when you share it on social media. We, we enjoy that. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, no, it's nice to see those kids that age tackling you know, tough topics. Yeah, I try to keep it to the middle school ones that are, that are done on the middle school or listed as middle school, but sometimes, you know, there's nothing too heavy in there that they can't understand as long as you take the time to really work with them on it. Mm -hmm. One of the other good things uh, for high school teachers, I don't know how many high school teachers out there that teach AP, is that there are the AP government stuff in the lesson plans as well. Um, I've never personally taught AP, but I think that that's been a concern for, um, I don't know if they've postponed the AP tests yet or not, but um, that's a good way to keep your kids engaged if you are teaching AP history. Yeah, so I think they, they shifted to a, or they're shifting to a digital format with the AP. Um, but if you're looking for resources on um, AP US government, um, AP human geography, AP macro, um, and then we just are gonna roll out AP um, US history, um, we have specific resources on our featured resources site um, that are content outlines or concept outlines that break down those content or those, uh, those frameworks into specific um, resources that we have. So if you look, um, these are what Keith is showing you are the US government ones. Um, we also have AP economics key uh, terms. We have the AP comparative government down at the bottom and also the AP human geography. Um, we're in the process of reviewing the AP uh, US history outline. Um, so if you're teaching that, that'll be added probably sometime in the next couple weeks or so. Um, but it's just a list of all of our resources broken down by um, either key concept or unit um, and then organized within that that framework so I'll just click on just the uh, government and political units yep so and you can see yeah you can see all the bell ringers for each of these um, essential uh, essential understandings and then also the units too and, and that's how it's going to be structured with the AP US history uh, uh, course outline too. So that's a really good resource to help engage your kids digitally with the AP stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other um, piece to that is I don't know if teachers are familiar with our cram for the exam program, but I think last year was our 11th year. If you are looking for review for your students, if you go to on our website and you type in the search box cram for the exam, up will populate all those programs. So we have two teachers from Chicago who have been coming on our program and it's the Saturday before the exam in May and they go through review and it's fun because students can call in with questions, you know, share their questions through different platforms. There they are. And uh, ask them just questions and topics to review for the exam. And this is neat again if you do have a classroom account you can create a little folder it says cram for the exam you can flag it at the top as keith showed you before that little save to my c-span classroom is because this is you can use this throughout the year and that's what we've had teachers say they use with their students so we have you know as i said over 10 years of them now so use that time uh, to have students review here and then um so far it's a go, right, Tom, for our, our review session this year, but I guess we'll just see how things unfold. Yeah, as, yeah, as with anything now, that's, yeah. everything's yeah. kind of tentative. Who knows, yeah, but just wanted to point out the uh, AP review. Everything can change every hour. <laughs> yeah, it does, you wake up, you don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm also gonna put my email into the chat. If you guys have any questions, follow up or anything else, you can just get a hold of me. Um, I got nothing but time at this point, so. <laughs> and the lucky thing is I have a four-year-old at home, so pre-K only goes till 11 o'clock. 
Does anybody have any additional questions? I'm going to, in a second here, I'll drop in your form for contact hour, um, the feedback survey, which is a quick kind of last call for a question that anybody has for Keith, Tom, Pam, C-SPAN. I don't have a question, but I just wanted to say I didn't, I was assuming it would all be like current events, but looking, because I'm, te my unit is colonialism pretty much oh. for the rest of the year. And I noticed that you have some, obviously some history um, things and I'll be looking at it later, but. Oh, thanks. But, you know, good point. You just uh, reminded me that um, we like to share the fact that when people think of C-SPAN, they think of the traditional House and Senate floor hearings, and certainly that's, that's our mission. But we also have on the weekends 48 hours of nonfiction book uh, program with author interviews and also 48 hours of American history TV programming. And we also have local content vehicles. What their role is to, to go out into a different city every month for a week and do interviews with authors and uh, historical pieces. And they're really visual because they're in location. We just had San Antonio in the last two weeks. So they'll go out, get B-roll, be, do these pieces from libraries or whatever the case may be. And that supports our program. So uh, our team sifts through all those programs and creates those uh, free resources for teachers to use in their classrooms. So thank you for that point because there is more than just uh, the government. Um, and I'm a giant history nerd, so I love looking through that stuff anyway, but, mm -hmm. And on the colonialism one, there's a great clip of a college professor that comes in in full, full garb oh, from the yes. Revolutionary War and does a whole <laughs> lecture that they have on there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It's fun. Um, they find interesting professors, interesting classes to cover. There was one who had done it on uh, taxes and bonds during World War II, and he did it like through the lens of uh, comics and that, and cartoons, that kind of a thing. So it's you know an engaging way to teach students about this particular time period. So there's some yeah, there's some really fun fun programs there in history. And speaking of comics, Joe, we have a social studies Twitter chat on comics Thursday. Well, that's right. I can't believe is that I'm a good that. plug right there, huh? That is. <laughs> Tell me about this. What is this? I'm writing this down. There's, uh, I think it's, Joe, I, you got to talk more about it than I can because I, I don't know how to do the Twitter chat yet, but I'm, I'm learning. 